welcome everybody and uh, it's a thank you Hello. all for showing up and then also just to let you know uh, a lot of the teachers they told me they're going to come in a bit late because they're finishing off their classes it's so hard to find a perfect time for everybody I know every school starts and finish different time and sessions but I know they'll be dropping in fur et à mesure like we say <laughs> you know so there's going to be popping faces in and out. Um, I know Julie, uh, Julie Vallée is going to show up too. Uh, Jessica, thank you for showing up. Uh, you know, there's uh, a few other people, they, they send me texts, they say, we're coming, it's just we'll be late. So just to give you a heads up. Uh, secondly, just to say, uh, I, I recognize some faces and uh, thank you for being here. I hope your year started well. And uh, to welcome back our partners also. We're lucky enough today we have been with us. I would like to introduce you Clementina. Clementina is a rep representative for MAT and I'll let her introduce herself a little more. Uh, well, well, hi everybody. I'm not sure if everyone's more comfortable with English or French. I'm comfortable either way. I, I would like to express my gratitude and in, in Welcoming, welcoming me to this après -cours. It is my first one. I'm super interested in what goes on in, in these sessions. Um, a little bit about me, if I may, while we're waiting for people to show up. Is that okay with you, um, Michelle? Absolutely. Go ahead, please. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of my educational background, I was a math teacher for the English Montreal School Board for about 17 years, mainly at the high school level, where I taught in the vast majority of the time, secondary four and secondary five. We also had an enriched um, group where we taught uh, calculus. So I did a lot of Cal 1 and Cal 2 with that group. So I, I did teach at every other level other than elementary. So my main focus has always been high school. Um, I have to admit that my experience in the FGA sector is limited to the experience that I've gotten thanks to my role at Grix. So I'm looking forward to learning quite a few things um, from you guys. I think it's a, a great opportunity for me to, to get to see what really goes on in your classes with your students, with evaluations, of course, et cetera. Uh, I'm also here to collect information about what your needs truly are when it comes to evaluations that we provide. Um, there, there was a level of dissatisfaction with secondary three exams. I am here to confirm that they've all been modified and revised and published as, uh, as new versions, if, we, if you will. Um, I'm also here to invite you all to please send us your feedback whenever there is something that doesn't work in your classrooms when it comes to our, for your students, I should say when it comes to the evaluations that we have. If, if we don't know, if you don't tell us, we don't necessarily know that something is problematic. Uh, we get a lot of feedback from the French school boards, to be quite honest, but very few from the English uh, school board, uh, school boards, plural. So I definitely welcome the feedback and I am here to tell you that as the chef d'équipe for the uh, FGA team at Grix, we are gonna treat every single feedback form that we receive as quickly and efficiently as possible. And we promise that we also will assure, ensure I should say that we contact the person that sends us the feedback to let them know what's going on with the suggestion or modifications that they wish to see. Uh, if there are any questions, of course, and Michelin is okay with those questions, I am more than willing to take some questions in. If there's no time for questions, I understand that as well. No, please. Uh, it's a, we're very, very happy to have Clementina with us. So if you have any questions for BIM, Grix, you're more than welcome to go ahead before we start our, our session. And, and just to just to add a little parentheses, Guylaine, today we're going to look at the uh, FB, uh, the math, the math, mainly math, uh, CCBE, like uh, the portrait of students for literacy, uh, pre-sec, sec one and two mainly. But if we need to go to the DBE also, it's not a problem. But today mainly, I thought based on uh, interest, you know, uh, yeah. this is what we're going to focus on. And we have a little gift for you also, uh, Jessica and I. Uh, and Laura, which Laura is not here, but we will uh, talk about uh, what we had prepared for you too also. Yeah, you'll see Jessica. <laughs> so yeah, please uh, fire away to Clementina. We're, we're, we're super happy to have her here. So if you have any questions uh, for BIM, now is the time. Uh, if you have any feedback, I definitely encourage you. And thanks to Richard, he puts in the conversation, the link for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, any uh, any comments any 
any feedback that uh, will make our exams even only better. With always as mind, of course, you know, they, they have to be for the benefit of the student, right? We want to make sure that we provide tools that are that correspond basically to what the students are faced with. So seeing as you guys are there every day on a daily basis, there is no one better place than you guys to tell us if something doesn't work. So I guess uh, we'll give them some time to think about it, uh, Clementina. And if there's anything, please, um, you could give us your email maybe, or would you prefer Absolutely. also, if you don't mind, maybe put it in the, uh, the conversation. So if anybody would like to contact you or uh, they'll use the more official site, whatever it is, uh, we'll, we'll try. Maybe we'll try to see if at the end, we'll, if there's other questions, we'll definitely also, we'll send it to your way. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm doing that right now. Thank you, Clementina. We count on you. You're our uh, evaluation rep for definitely we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep you uh, included in everything. I would like to introduce to everybody also, there's the RECI site. They're not here today, but they're on a training session at Rivière de Loup. So uh, Giovanna and Avi and Mark send all their... Uh, uh, all their love and uh, regrets for not being here, but usually you always we always have a representative from Bessy. And also to extend uh, to anybody who ever needs any support in pedago numeric, like anything that deals with uh, online learning, any any anything, they're there for us to support us too. And also we have a new service that's recently new. It's not new, but it's recently been added. Also SEC, which is service uh, service d'education complémentaire. So we all know in our school classrooms. Uh, we have uh, students who requires a bit more attention, a bit more creative way of, of, of actually learning. Uh, the SEC department is there to maybe help us to uh, find other ways of, of helping our students learn. So uh, these ladies um, also usually up, they're super, super busy, but they'll be here upon request whenever we need a specific, let's say a topic that requires the uh, service uh, the educatif complementaire, they'll join us and they'll, they'll talk to us also. So as you notice, uh, our team is uh, starting to get bigger, we're solid and we cover more ground. If you ever need anything, even things that maybe I cannot give it to you, I will, I know enough people, we're connected enough that we could find you the help you need. So we would like to always start by saying you're supported, you're not alone, we're all in it together. I always like to always go back to that because that's what I live on. I need you, you need me, we need each other. That's how our students get uh, only uh, the best. So starting with that, today I thought will be a great, great opportunity we're not talking about the biology program, definitely not, but it will be a great opportunity to talk about the CCBE um, program, math, and uh, specifically to have a better understanding of the needs and the wants of our, of our, of our students. So um, we, we, we're trying to, to have um, a different way of, of running the après cours. We wanted to have like more like a, a roundtable conversation about topics that touches us all and uh, what needs uh, that's available out there and how can we help each other doing it. Um, I would like to like invite uh, probably Jessica and I'm waiting also for Julie Vallée to show up uh, to come and maybe France to, to, to introduce themselves and uh, if you don't mind um, we'll, we'll, we'll these are our these are three uh, teachers that work in different setup that mainly work with the, with the uh, CCBE uh, crowd. I, I'm sure all of you touch, touch them too, but um, they, they, they deal with pre-sec, sec one and sec two, and we will have some conversation about what their portfolio. And please, if you have any question, any comment to, 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 to join, uh, you're more than welcome. So Jessica, do you wanna? talk about uh, yourself and what you teach and so in the effort to make my make sure I don't sound horrible I shut out my uh, video uh, so I actually mainly teach DBE but I in two different school board I either work individualized in person or hybrid or I do the distant educations but I have a lot of students who are away from school for a very long time, I mean, 10, 20, 30 years long, or they previously or like have existing 
undiagnosed learning difficulty, so they hardly remember anything anyway. So I find myself um, needing to review all the way back to CCBE. So that's how Michelin uh, get me on board. <laughs> uh, I think it's a reality for a lot of our teacher. Um, I don't know, Julie, uh, if you would like to, Julie Valley, if you would like to talk about also your clientele. Sorry, the other Julie will be more than welcome to also talk. <laughs> Wait, which Julie are you talking about? Me? Yes, you're Julie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hi, uh, hi. I uh, work at New Horizons Adult Education Center. Hi, everyone I know. <laughs> uh, I work with uh, all of the levels from pre secondary, so students who never passed even uh, their elementary level or students that, uh, like Jessica was saying, that it's been so long that they forgot everything. Uh, all the way up to level five high math. I also teach all the levels of science, chemistry, physics. So I touch kind of everything, <laughs> which is interesting because I know how to get them ready for, for the higher levels and I know what's super necessary and I know the exams pretty well too. So I'm happy to be part of the group. Thank you very much, Julie. The other Julie, if you would like to add something, you're more than welcome. <laughs> okay. And um, France, do you want to talk about your setup also a little bit? Uh, I'm working on CBC Lashet. Um, it, this is my six years here now. Um, I'm teaching individualization. And uh, I'm lucky because I already study for, um, uh, I have a specialist for kids with uh, needs. And here I'm able to put everything I know with, with them. And I'm teaching all levels for French, maths, science, with chemistry, uh, physics, computer, programmation, and robotic. And sometimes I have only one student, like right now I have only two students in chemistry and one student in uh, physics. I have, I think, three students in science. I am very, very fortunate to have these amazing three teachers on board and I just wanted to to display their their great work like all of yours it's just to show how our classroom could be diversify from like uh from Julie getting them from pre-sec to sec five advanced from France having uh, multi French uh, like uh, multi-discipline uh and a number here and a number thin and have somebody like like Jessica who has to do fad and in class and by become a dad so like you I don't know how everybody's reality is but believe me sometimes when I look at my classroom when I taught I thought I had issues but you know what when I hear other people I think uh, I think I have no problem really <laughs> you know so uh, you know to, to, to this whole idea is not to compare but just to kind of share that we have uh, we have common concern and we all in the right place putting our heart on the line to help everybody to the best of our abilities and and this is really to 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 come down to uh, today's conversation is mainly to talk about um, again, the CCB and the, the difficulty and their needs, and also to talk about like how, how every teacher maybe manages these kind of things. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by, by asking you, what works best in your class? What challenges do you see with these students uh, coming in? How do, you, how do you manage all of that? And what needs do you kind of prioritize? And how do you do your... Uh, student portraits i mean I, it's a big question loaded question but see can you share with us <laughs> it your is, experience it is good so um are you kind of asking me what the day-to-day -day looks like yeah in yeah. the classroom okay so because i have all the levels in the same classroom at the same time what i usually do is i go around the room to see what topic they're working on and it's funny because some of them will say math right so they I'm like, no, like literally like with concept, like you have a list, you have, so I give them an outline depending on their course. And I use math help services, which is a great tool. If I didn't have math help services, I would be doomed. Uh, and so I give them an outline and they follow my outline to the T and then they go with math help services. And then I give some uh, 
uh, handouts, you know, like quizzes and things just to verify that they've, that they've actually mastered what they are supposedly learning in math health services. Um, but then I get to know the students more and more and I see what their needs are and how they learn. And, and I look at their background and, and their confidential files and everything about the student. And then I'll have a nice, like after a couple of weeks, I have like an idea of how this person works. So every person is very different. Uh, but the idea of asking at the beginning of the class what concept you're working on is for me to see, okay, these people have seen this. If you're there, you've seen this. And I go, okay, for example, today, I had four students in the 4151. And one was at the end where it's like the characteristics of a graph. The others hadn't done anything else at all. Like they just started last week. So I said, I'll do a lesson today on characteristics of the, the graph. And then you can cross that out of your outline if you give me the assignment. So I try, like they have to be able to work on their own individually in the class when I'm doing lessons with other people. But if the, the best way I found was to try and get as many as possible together in the same course, or even I, today was two, two levels because characteristics of a graph are in level 3051 and, and 4151. So I had a group of level four and three and four. And then I do a stand-up lesson. This is probably their favorite thing that I do. I do a stand-up lesson. I give the information. We do a little, you know, a normal lesson. And then when that's done, I'll go help each one individually with their assignment. And then that's how I, I know the speed that they're going. And it's like that every hour. <laughs> so every hour is like, what am I teaching now? And then I decide, I'm like, okay, so I guess none of you, I can think of something that would work in all of your levels. So I'm just going to do individual help. And then Math Help Services allows me to spy on them, which is wonderful. So I can go see what they're actually working on and saying, oh, you know what? There's something in here I need to tell you, come on over. And that I have, I have it uh, rolling like this all the time. This year I've had the opportunity to ask for one block a day to be reserved in, in parentheses or brackets uh, for science. So that means my class is full of people in math and science, but I'm teaching science stand up during that time. So I'm now able to do projects, able to do other things and just individual uh, help. And, and so it, it worked last year so well that I had all the students uh, that were registered for physical science in the same class. Uh, I got six through last year, both 4061, 4062 and some 4064. And now I'm starting a new cohort, 4061 and 4063. So it's, uh, this, this is how I can get people through science because oftentimes they'll forget science. <laughs> they'll just do their math to level five high. I'm like, wait, you haven't done science yet. <laughs> so we have to eat. We also have to check their profile, like their whole goal thing and make sure that they have all their, all their things done. But that's pretty much my day to day. Uh, and I will make up stuff on the fly. And I'm sure you do that too. I'm sure all of you are like, oh, you need this. Let's make it on the fly. Uh, so what I've done to keep the beautiful things I do on the fly is I'll scan them and put them on uh, a Moodle. So sometimes some, sometimes I don't have time. I'll just, I have like this big of a pile. I'm waiting for a ped day. <laughs> but I put them on my pile of scan it and put on Moodle one day. So I don't lose all the beautiful things that I do on the fly with one or the other. So. That, I guess that's it for me. Sorry, talked for a while. No, not, not at all. Any challenges? I mean, any challenges you face, like things that, uh, you know, catches you by surprise? Julie, I, I, I'm sorry, like just to. <laughs> catches me by surprise. Like every day is a surprise, I think, in adult education. <laughs> um, what did Sonia, did you want to talk before I keep talking? Or? Okay. Well, one, one of the main things is the continuous intake. That's tough for me. Because for example, I had a kind of a group of level two students that I started on basic algebra. So what's a variable? How do you play with a variable? How do you use a variable? How do you, and I was about to start to like the solving part. And I had like three new students in level two come in. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Like start from here, I see Julie like laugh crying, like that's our reality, right? So so there's a there's that. So you're like, okay, well I'm here now doing some stand-up classes. Or I, I have planned uh, I made a 
um, you know the, the game Unlock? It's like an escape room. Uh, it's with cards and your iPad and you have to find the codes. So this summer, I know I'm geeky, but this summer I reverse engineered one of those games and I made the clues have to be uh, about finding the slope of a line or finding the intersection of two lines. And so the whole thing becomes a math game. And so I was able to put that together and I had it all ready for t like this week, none of my students showed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so surprise, like that's, that's, uh, that's how it is. Like, uh, I never know, I plan things. It'll happen someday eventually, I don't know. Will they ever be in the same class? I, it's a, you never know. You have to be on, on, like able to turn on a dime, you know, whatever happens, but yeah. And that one of the, another big challenge is the, um, this year especially is the, the ADD. It's huge. Like having the students be able to work on their own is so difficult. We have a lot of under 18s this year. Uh, like usually the older adults are as a leur affaire, like they say, but like the younger ones, they're on their phone, they're, you give them a laptop to do math online, they're somewhere else on their laptop. Like it's, you want to help them focus, but then you're also trying to teach the group of people. So that is a big, uh, I guess, mess for me right now, because if I'm focusing on teaching a concept to a group of students in my classroom, I know there's five, six that are completely gone somewhere else. I'm like, ah. and it's, so it's hard to manage that way. Thank you. Thank you. Sonia. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you guys again. Um, Julie, hats off to you for so Julie and all of you who teach in the individualized um, format. Hats off to you guys. You're, you're handling a lot. <laughs> Um, but Julie, I just wanted to ask you with respect to Math Help Services and Moodle. Uh, so it sounds like you're using Math Help Services every day, all day. But when you mentioned the Moodle, are you putting additional resources on Moodle and the students have access uh, to those resources as well? And are you allowed to link, like, do you link the Math Help Services inside your Moodle course so that they only go to one space? Because these are some questions we're, we're trying to make these decisions right now. We use Moodle at our RSB as well at Riverside. Okay. Um, but we also use Math Help Services. So Julie and I are, are we're just about now like um, building courses for CCBE. And we're, we're having this discussion, you know, like we have, we have resources in our CCBE courses, but we don't really want the students to go to two different places. Can we link Math Help Services inside the Moodle course? So these are all the questions we're sort of. Well, I'm glad you're asking because that's something that we tried. So two years ago, we tried to have like the students go on Moodle and then in for each concept, like our big idea of the course, they would go on the, on the tile and then find the Moodle, the math help services. It's too much. It's too much for them. So we came back to having, um, my outline, my, my Google Doc outline, because we, you'll, you'll see you change it as you go. So it's a Google Doc where they have the I can statements that come from you. <laughs> and then the videos that I want them to do. And sometimes like skip example five, don't do question eight, nine, 10, because these ones, we don't really like them. And, and, it's, and I've built the ones for CCBE with uh, the teachers in Callensville, Sarah and Teresa. Uh, so it was a team effort. We watched all the videos. We looked at all the examples. We looked at all the questions and we picked and chose what we felt was adult ed material. Uh, and and uh, yeah, what we felt was going to be needful. And we made those outlays from there. I can send, I can give you access to all of those Google Docs if you want. Like it's, it took us a long time to do it and we got released for it. So it's like free. <laughs> uh, but we found that so the Moodle is more for the teachers. So, cause Teresa, Sarah and I, we all have access to the Moodle. So like she makes something on the fly, puts it there, I have it. So it's, a, okay. it's kind okay. of an easy way to share. We tried with the students, it was too hard. Physical science, all my stuff is on Moodle, all of it. Uh, the book and uh, 
Moodle, but for, for math, it's really just the math help services. Then, like I said, like I'll, I'll give them their assignment, like they have their, like let's say a slope of a line, okay? They're looking at the equation of a line. After I see that they've done the videos and such, in my Moodle, I have for me a bunch of stuff that they I can assess them with. So I'll give them a, a word problem, I'll give them this and that, and then I'll see, okay, the learning is done, check mark. Okay. If the student is a uh, distance at home study, uh, they can they have access to the Moodle to download it for themselves. So okay. that's why we, we like the Moodle in that sense, because the, the distance ed teachers like having additional resources as well. So we're all kind of sharing that space. Okay, okay, but it's mainly being used. So Moodle at this point is mainly being used as a teacher virtual binder, let's say. Yeah, but like I said, we tried it. We tried it with the students. It, it was, okay, it was all tough. over the place. Like it was, they were either doing one and not the other. Okay. So they, and they're not super autonomous on yeah. that point. Like I see the yes. Okay. <laughs> so we had to guide them all the time. So I was like, you know what? Let's stick to math help services and I'll be the one bringing in okay. the assignments as we go and as I see fit. And that was our, probably our, our favorite way to go. Yeah. Well, if these documents really would like to share with the, uh, with us, please uh, be my guest that uh, will add it to the agenda. So everybody who would like to have them will have access to them. If you don't mind, I mean, you share. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, it Julie. Might, it might take me a second to get all the links for all of them. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'll, There's no rush. I'm sure we okay. waited so long, we'll wait more. <laughs> I'll, I'll send it. Well, it shouldn't take me that long, but I uh, can't do it right now, you know? So uh, no worries, I'll, I'll take no the time to, to well, yeah, they're Google Docs. I'll just give you give anyone access to them, I guess. And yeah, perfect. just having all the Thank links. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, France, you had the... Like this year, I tried to do something else like have many students like in sec one level and they are on their phone all the time. But what I did to help me a lot and I have success with, and I will keep that until it doesn't work. It's uh, every day I go to see them and I ask them, okay, what do you want for your challenge for this class? Okay, my class, it's... Uh, one hour and 20 minutes, three times in a, in a class of two hours. And sometimes they said only half of, of the page, but it's, it's working. They do it and they show me and I ask them, I want to be proud of you when you get out of my class and I want to see you smiling. If not, I will not be happy because I want very you be proud of you and you'll be happy to be on my class. And right now is working very well. And sure, I would like they move more, but that's good. And when I try to uh, teach uh, with my um, whiteboard, um, like uh, for uh, algebra, I put, I take off the, the letter and I put a big question mark. And now the, the kids just laugh. So now you see why it's an X. It's more easy to see it and it's more easy to work with. And after that, they say, okay, I understand that. And it's very funny. All the time I try to do something funny like that. And after that, I ask them to work with their math health services. And many times I told them to come in my desk and I show them an easy way to do it. And when we were in online, avec the COVID, okay, they, that's helped me to find a structure. And I asked for algebra to, to follow the structure. They need to very put what they gave them. After that, the what question, what is your question? And after that, they, I asked which formula will you use? And after that, you calculate I want to see the table. I want to see your graph. I want to see everything to be sure when they do the, the exam, they will be ready for that. And last year, I was very impressed about that. 
of many students, the um, the success with good mark. But sure, I've some doesn't, but it's a, a it's a step, step by step. Yeah, just to, to reinforce what France said, and it's it's wonderful that if you have these conversation with these students, and like like France says, having this connection and asking them like that one thing you have to do today. Let's make a goal for today only, and it's a small goal. Okay, you have so much to do. Let's pick things that by the end of the day that will make you happy, and makes me happy, and accomplish something. So having a small target goal per day will progressively increase their success and, and... And I ask that for an hour and, and 20 minutes. Yeah. It's not for the day. Every yeah. class, I ask for a small goal and I take it and I punch it with the, the date on. And when yeah. they get it, I put the smile on. <laughs> so, and they yeah, are so happy to see the smile. Yeah, stickers and whatever works. Kids, like our adults are always, you know, they, they want to succeed. Everybody wants to succeed. And and also I, I love what France does also when she guides them through like, not procedure, but through questions. Like, did you think about her presenting it? Did you think about uh, using a formula? What formula, why? So she's guiding them through questions a lot in their, in their way of doing things, you know? Uh, in their way of doing things. And that's where she found like, by forcing these kind of questions constantly, they, they almost predicted what she's gonna ask them before she even asked them. So they kind of almost started to understand there's a strategy to go about every mathematical problem to always say, okay, what am I looking for? What's the formula? How can I represent it? And this is what competency is about. So she's like just reinforcing through questioning. And, I, and, and obviously her students are, are, are doing great. And, uh, you know, and again, this is like step by step, like we say, right? Um, Jessica. My name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I want to, to let Sonia and whoever else is interested to know that I am giving out a goal to integrate Moodle's and, and MHS, but that my house services because I have built way too many H5P and Junior Lee for me to give that up. I've started my house services late in the game. And uh, there is some loophole that I can explore. So uh, if that, if I get to make it working, I will let you guys know. Jessica is our superstar uh, tech <laughs> teacher, everything. <laughs> yes, uh, Sonia. Um, Tina, if you don't mind, she just wrote to me in the chat saying that uh, we can also, reminding me, I completely forgot, Tina, uh, reminding me that we can also upload our material to Math Help Services to do it the other way around. Uh, what I don't know, and maybe if somebody in the group does, like when we do that, does our, if we create something and we upload it to Math Help Services to give our students access to it, does it become the property of Math, Math Help Services from there? Is it? I don't believe it does. Okay. But Jessica, maybe you can tell. I have asked John explicitly about that. And he said, no, it belongs to the individual teacher. Okay. But it does, you won't be able to upload everything. For example, I really, really like my H5Ps. <laughs> and okay. that is uh, not possible. Okay. So for those who don't know the H5P, I, I created a series of H5P on properties of function because I have so many students who keep, Picking the wrong numbers drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. So I literally have the H5P guiding them through one step at a time. And the H5P is set up. So moment they put in the number, the program will tell them it's right or wrong right away. So they don't continue for five minutes and then know something's wrong. So most of them went through that very great. Um, I am working with John to explore both to see if I can either put his stuff through the LMS link into Moodle or open up his system more so that can integrate more than just documents and things like that or videos into MHS. So I'm actually also exploring both. Me being a control freak, I like things into Moodle versus things into MHS, but we'll see. I think our administration would prefer that well, but yeah, it's all things to look into. 
Yeah, at at, uh, at Riverside, we're sort of, I would say, mandated to use Moodle as our teaching platform. Uh, but nonetheless, it's all it's all good questions of stuff that uh, we have to explore. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, but but this is this is brings us actually, Jessica, to the project that we worked on last year with Laura. Uh, we felt uh, I, I don't know. I'll I'll let you, uh, Jessica, after talk about uh, how we planned it. Um, last year we we uh, well through a lot of discussion, through a lot of needs, because of actually the Abrecourt and because of the need that was brought up, uh, we have a lot of needs with the literacy, with the learning, uh, holes in learning. We're getting students from high school who like they're supposed to be in sec four, but when you start working with them, they're really like sixth grade level, you know? So we had a lot of these kind of question and concern last year. So we had put a project uh, together uh, last year, uh, where actually Jessica and, and Laura, who's not here today, but uh, she would have wanted to be here, uh, together, um, together to make individual standalone lessons, to be able to, it's mainly built for the secondary one and two courses, but they, they'll be used throughout from one to five. So um, I could, I'm going to share my screen with you. And to show you, we were able to accomplish secondary one completely from A to Z, but I'm gonna be uh, sharing my screen with you, hold on, to show you. Um, I have one screen today, so it's a bit difficult to kind of <laughs> manage so many things today, but let me show you how they look like. And this is gonna be on the AGE website for everybody to use. So let's take a look at this one. For example, this is what you're gonna be having access to. It's the outline of all the topics um, that are that is taught in 1102. Um, Jessica, would you want to talk to that since uh, you created that? Uh, sure. So each hyperlink give you a single lesson that starts with objective vocabularies and actually start with the end of, whoops, <laughs> end of modules evaluation first. So if the student can do the evaluation, you don't have to go through it. Uh, then some instruction, some exercise. So, so if I have a student who forgot what population is, I can give them that single standalone lessons. And that student could come from, I don't know, SEC 4, SEC 5, anywhere. And so we have created a series of standalone lessons like that. And string along together, you can also put them together to form the whole uh, math one one oh two, because I'm also following the uh, the program I study. So to include all the competency covered there, yeah. And we have so you're making the, you're making like a book, but just online. Like you could if you printed it you could publish that. <laughs> yes. So the idea is for, like, cause I wanted to, to be complete, not just lesson here and there, because I am thinking individualized madness, right? We, if it's not complete, I'm gonna use it because I don't want to put here things from different places together. Sometimes you use a different language and any student with a weak literacy, if you change the wording, they're gonna get confused. So yes. To all together, it covered the entire one on one, one on two, but there also can be taken apart very easily. So if you have stack four just needs a review on a certain topic, you can also pick them out and be able to give it to them. And each lessons uh, are complete on its own as well. Yeah, and I'll show you over here the, uh, hold on, where is it? Uh, so I'll show you, this is the, uh, and, and Jessica, of course, we have local exams too. So this is the 01. The whole idea behind it is to try our best to help everybody. You know, we're building it for SEC 1, 
of course, sec one and two, but it's really to help from one to five. Like, like Jessica said, if let's say, for example, you have somebody in sec four and he's having trouble with, or she having trouble with bed mass, you have a whole lesson here on bed mass that you could take. And it's always starts with the I can formula. And then of course you have vocabulary, you're upfronting the vocabulary here. And in this case here, like these are keywords that they will see in their test, in their exam coming back over and over. And notice over here, we also looked at prior knowledge. So hopefully before being able to do bed mass, you're supposed to be able to know, again, solving sequence, arithmetic operation, positive decimals, rounding off positive decimal. And if you have a student that tells you, no, 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 I know what I'm doing. Well, perfect. Let's do an end of lesson evaluation. So let's see if you're able to do this exercises, few of these exercises, then you're okay. You don't have to do it. But most of the time, this is where we see things fails. And if they do, perfect. You could get your students to sit somewhere. And here we go. We have a full lesson for you with exercises, of course. And then we thought it's so important to shift also the feeling about math. I know sometimes uh, we disconnect that someone has like how they feel about a subject. And this was brought in actually, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, Laura was, uh, she works a lot in neuroscience also. She's a math teacher, but works a lot in neuroscience. And she wanted to bring in also the, the, the component that math is not only like a rigid component that you can, dis you can disconnect it from feeling, your feeling about a subject is as important as doing this subject. So by the end of the lesson, how do I feel about this? Am I feeling comfortable? Am I feeling okay? So hopefully we're trying to shift also uh, shift the feelings about something, but not only this, is also to come back to teach them how to study. Notice over here, how do you feel about the learning? What can I do better? But then again, describe the lesson in your own words. So going back and summarizing, compiling the information, what do I need to remember? So next time I don't make mistakes, right? And of course we give them the key, uh, the answer key, which I think it's, it's really important. To, and that will elevate the work on the teacher also. So we did that for secondary one, completely, um, completely available to like for the 1101 and 1102. And I think Jessica was kind enough to, to do already some local exam, if I'm not mistaken, to what, like 110, uh, the 1101 or the 1102? I think you did the, did the uh, 1102. 1102. And remember another thing, another issue that we see, like you have students coming in in SAC 4, they're just starting to do statistic or SAC three doing statistics, the last time technically they took statistic was in secondary one, right? So review session could be literally taking the whole sec one uh, standalone lesson and say, okay, go do these and then let's start statistics. So you're not telling them you're redoing all of sec one, two, three, you're just doing that component that might help you better transition into here. So this is the idea behind it is to fill in the hole, the gaps, because one thing today, I actually, to share something with you this morning, I was talking to my boss. Um, I was telling her, is there actually statistics showing us what's the success rate right now in school, in high school? And, and how are they doing on their SEC four exams? You know, because these are the guys that we're getting, right? And we had a whole conversation about whatever results we see are not truly representative of their learning. And I mean, Clementina, you probably have access to more statistics that we that that we do. And actually, we're looking for this statistic just to say, like when you say, oh, the secondary four success rate this year is at 80 percent. Is it really an 80 percent? There was no sanctioned exam. <laughs> well, I mean, the, because of COVID and all of that. So these kids are coming in with grades that doesn't necessarily reflect what they really, really are able to do or know. So we're getting them. We still have curriculum to teach, we still have to start from a certain point, but we don't have time also to go back from zero, right? But not knowing, ha having a library of standalone lessons, maybe when we get to teach a lesson, let's say a, a subject or they're in their book somewhere and we see that it fails because of a prior knowledge that they're lacking, you could almost pick it up, that standalone lesson and give it to them, to kind of bring them up to par. Of course, these, these standalone lesson would like to up them with like a video and stuff, but we wanted to start somewhere that is accessible and doable for everybody in all communities. So we started with secondary one, it's all ready to use. Now, hopefully this year, we're gonna work on the secondary two. So if anybody is interested in, in elaborating content for the secondary two, and believe me, and I don't know if Jessica could speak to it, when you start building these kind of standalone lessons, 
even with Laura, you get to know the curriculum, not a little bit, a lot more in depth. And you kind of start connecting stuff around. I know not, not everybody has the chance also to teach from one to five. So you could see if I'm teaching this here, that it's going to show up here and here and here. Some people are only teaching levels also and only sticking to these levels and they don't see where and how this applies elsewhere, right? So uh, being part of a development team actually gets you to start questioning where you are and learning the, the, the things in more depth. I don't know, Jessica, if you would like to add more to that. We are attempting to beautify and complete that whole learning progression of learning from yes. sec one to maybe we will cut it off at sec four because if I they should know <laughs> by now, by then, if they don't, we're in trouble. Uh, but it yeah. is has been very helpful to to make something and then be able to use it on my student right away too. Yeah, I don't know, Jessica, if you have it accessible, the genially that you showed about the progression of learning that you've done with the, with the plants. So maybe if you would like to share your screen just to show how, what would be accessible. And by the way, everything is gonna be displayed on the age resources. I just sent it this morning to Kana and well, our programmer, and hopefully by next week, it should be available on the age resources. So it's, it's available, it's for everybody to use to your discretion. Again, if you see a lesson and you see another way of doing it, up, up like uh, making it better, please go ahead, send us some feedbacks because this is all work in progress. Nothing is perfect, <laughs> of course, but we do to the best we can, right? And when we're talking about Laura, we're talking about Laura uh, Freeberg. Freebird. She works for the um, for the same school board as you, uh, Laura, uh, Jessica, right? Uh, uh, no, no, the WPUSB. Sorry, the the yeah. Western uh, Quebec. Yeah. Uh, yes, Julie. On the AGE website, what are you gonna put it under? It's gonna be on the um, Map CCBE, the secondary one uh, tile under. Okay. Uh, that's where not not to. teacher resources because that's a no 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 things. no 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 and by okay. the way just to let you know teacher resources and suggestion by teacher this is like an open like padlet that we kind of took from from uh, the previous website and we just left it as is because uh, it was just like a shared platform that we were not going to look into we will we're slowly going back and cleaning it up with you know, the pretest and stuff, but we can't, you know, this is a huge job and we're slowly tackling one element at a time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna get better with time, only with time. So forgive us for uh, the, the, the system is not perfect yet, but uh, this kind of project will be probably put like under like a Google doc, like you said, Julie, with all these topics and all these topics are active links that will take you to those lessons. So the teacher could download it as an individual lesson or could actually use it as a way of teaching for the, the, the sec one or, or sec two. Obviously there, there's no pretest or anything, but this will be added in the pretest section. And of course, the videos hopefully will start also linking it in these documents too. But we wanted to make it as easy as possible for accessibility wise. But this I is guess the, the, so you're you're kind of making your own math help services. This is going on because math help services does that already. So that's 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 why I can survive <laughs> because they have <laughs> they have all that. And uh, I guess the difference is is that it's not free. So you're actually making your own little math help services. You know, if you incorporate videos with that, that's, yeah, I mean, it's the whole, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to put all that together. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is we wanted to make it accessible to everybody. And just remember, these are work that's already been done. Like Jessica has been doing this already. This is the generosity of teacher who are willing to share. And we like, far away teachers may not have access to Wi-Fi or other issues, like you may have other restrictions elsewhere. So having, a, again, maybe like, I guess, math help services, but it's mainly picked from the FGA, like the adult education programs and built for the education, adult education program. I know um, math help services started with the high school program. And uh, now they're starting to have more and more the adult education program, but before it started off from there. So, yeah. Yeah, I worked closely with John MacArthur 
telling him we need a video on this, we need a video on that. That's not what we teach. That's not that's it. it that's well, not that's in the it. program. That's in the program, not evaluated. So I've been yeah. uh, in contact with him quite a bit for the lower levels because it was working so so well for the higher levels. But I kind of jump started the the lower levels uh, for I was like, get it done. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> we need a lot more feedback. Thank you for that. So I don't know if uh, Jessica, you want to show your uh, Geniali just to kind of oversee how we would like to sh present uh, the progression of learning. I don't know if you have it accessible. So this, I, I'm the type of person that need everything mapped from the beginning to the end before I can start anything. So just so you know, and I love Geniali. <laughs> So I built a quick Genially that I probably will change because I don't like the layout anymore. So it break down the course code from sec one to sec to four. And click on lead you to the first one, 1101 finance and arithmetic and break down, like group the, informations and also tell them what this is about and what they need to know before. So you have that little plus or revisions for almost everything, sometimes just plus if there's nothing and you can see that if I haven't finished it yet. And I have that for 1101, 1102, right? some are shorter than others. And so on and so forth. It's not completely built yet, but that's what we wanted to do eventually to have everything mapped out, especially for a teacher who may be not comfortable teaching math. So if they are students having trouble on um, variable, they can figure out what could be the, the whole lay in a knowledge gap that they have and try to find lessons for that. So yeah, that's a quick genially. And this this gives also the, the 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 teacher an overview. Let's say somebody who never taught this level will have an overview of the 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 whole the whole class in just one look, you know. So you have an idea, and also which ideally eventually we would love love to develop is actually connecting from one to four, especially the CST like pathway is like all the topics that keep on growing from one level to the next or from one module to the next, like let's say in algebra from one to four to have the continuum like the progression of learning is like what you keep on adding from one level to the next. So it'll be easier for somebody who's teaching multi-level, multi-modules will have will have to see okay if I skip it here what's the impact over here you know to have that overview because then you'll spend more time here and you may actually have some some saying to the students say look we may take a bit more time here but look how much you'll go faster here and here and here so become almost as an incentive but it's also to connect the, the content also so uh yeah so this is what we've been working on also we wanted to 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 help the network with so, uh, and this is, again, this is uh, available to everybody. Uh, this was done with lots of lots of love and lots of care. And if you have any feedback to make it better to, to, uh, to add to it, please be our guest. And we kept the template simple and the same for all of them. So the first page gives you almost like an overview of the lesson and also could give you like almost like an individualized uh, mini test or mini uh, formative testing if the students are familiar with the concept or not. And you can keep on going till you see where they fail, you know, <laughs> where it fails and probably that's where you spend a bit more time. It's sometimes to know where is the hole is the problem because once you know where to start, then it's easier to build. But once you get like a building that's half crooked, then you have to kind of investigate, you know? And like you say, reverse engineering all the way, which is uh, sometimes, uh, Chasse au trésor, like we say in French, you know, <laughs> where is the issue? Let's go and find it, right? But um, I'm, I'm very thankful for Jessica and, and Laura. They, they put a lot of hours into this, a lot of work into this. And uh, if anybody's interested to, to, to kind of join the team, to kind of elaborate for the secondary too, or even to look into the pre-sec, we'll be very, very happy. I know, uh, I know a lot of us done a lot of stuff on our own, but maybe gathering it up and sharing it to uh, the network will help everybody. 
especially now more than ever, because our students are getting more and more challenging <laughs> in, uh, in terms of creativity, in terms of creativity, because they need us all. So uh, now I'll leave the floor if you have any question. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, Jessica, how did you find make, building this? Don't be too honest, though. <laughs> Scramble my brain as badly as my students do. <laughs> yes, Julie Valley. I have a question about evaluation. So I know the level four, they're sanctioned. We can't touch them. But do you treat, like all of you, like do you treat the other levels with the same? amount of dignity slash respect if you know what I mean <laughs> or you're kind of building your own because I know we receive a prototype for the government we have the BIM some of you have BIM too and I'm at the point where I, I would just want to create my own uh, I've done some for level five because we only had two versions of the level five high math and that was not enough <laughs> so uh, I created some of my own there um, and for pre-secondary as well uh, colleagues and myself at uh, New Horizons have built some of them, but are, are you more into we just use BIM and the ministry or you make your own type of valuation for, for final exams? I know we build pretests as much as we want, but like the actual final exam. Um, well, Clementina, just to, to clear, to clear, there's only two versions for, for SEC 5, just to be clear, because I know... Uh, for, what, sure to, for which course number? Is it the 5173, 5163? Which one are you referring to, Julie? Well, for the 5173 at our center, we only had two versions, A and B. It's possible that they only gave you access to those two versions, but there's actually three versions for, for okay. uh, 5173. So you'd have to check okay. with the BIM manager at your school board for access to that third version. Okay, super. But are we are we uh, allowed to uh, create our own exams for all final exams, of, provided we follow the DED and the program and everything, obviously, and we get it. I get it approved and everything. But is is that an okay thing to do for all the other levels that are not sanction? Legally, yes. <laughs> Legally, yes. Um, however, again, th there's benefit of using a common exam like BIM. BIM follows a lot of rigorous, uh, they follow the prototype, they follow the, uh, they follow uh, specific, you know, uh, they follow what's requested in terms of competency and stuff. So I, I th personally think, of course, they're the best way to go about it. However, this is where it's really, really important if you don't like those exams to give feedbacks because they can only get better by feedback. But if you're asking if you could do your own local exams, um, following the DED and following the competency requirement, I think, yes, there's nothing that says you cannot do that. Yeah, and you could correct me. I mean, uh, Clementina and Sonia, yeah, but. I'll ahead. confirm. I'll also mention, though, that if you do develop local exams and, and you want us to participate, perhaps in making sure that everything's respected to the T, you can also share those exams with us. There, there's many steps to that, of course, but you can share those exams with us and then we put the final touches on them. It goes through a linguistic revision as well, which I believe you may not have access to within your own school boards, but we do. We linguistically revise everything. We check copyright. Uh, we have graphic designers, of course, to make it look prettier. I know that for some of you, some of the past exams are still not, or, or maybe not up to par. They date back to 2012. We are looking at bettering those as well right now, just so you know. So yes, if you do develop your own stuff, but you would like for us to maybe be involved in that, perhaps reach out to me and, and, and let's see what we can do. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what I was going to say, Julie. At Access, we uh, we use the BIM exams. Um, we have one teacher out of all our AGE teacher, all of our AGE teachers, um, who wrote her own local, um, for whatever reasons. Uh, before I got there, um, our teachers are encouraged. So, if a teacher does want to write a local exam, it is rare on the AGE side, but if they do, we always encourage them to share it with BIM, uh, so that we can just add to the bank. 
And that was, I had another thought in mind. Sorry, I forgot it. <laughs> I don't know, Julie, if there's anything you want to add there. Uh, but no, uh, sorry, validation. Yes, we, our process and our school is if a teacher writes a local exam, they have to submit it to the consultant for validation, and then it gets sent into archives. But again, in AGE, it's so rare, and we encourage teachers to use them. Farron? Hi, uh, thanks for such an informative session. Uh, I, this is my first time joining this. Last time on September 21st, I tried joining the science session, but I could not find the red button. So <laughs> I just, I'm just, my question is about where is the, uh, where is the resource section, like which you're mentioning again and again, and all the recordings are kept there as well? Uh, yes, session? I will. Yeah, there is, um, if you take a look at the science under the, the science uh, button, like the minute you, you come in, the, there's the English communities and all of the, uh, under the English community, you have all the communities that have been running for like last year and this year. And if you keep on going further, there's an archive. So everything we've done for the past year, it's all recorded. And the, in terms of the resources, um, we'll be uploading them. But a lot of these resources also, they'll be also uploaded on the website. So there'll be a resource sec a section in the APRECO, and there's also the age resources website. And if you're not familiar for the age, age uh, resources uh, website, I will type it up for you in the, uh, in the uh, thank you. chat. And uh, thank you, everybody. I know I want to, if anybody else still have any question, uh, if you have any, uh, uh, any comments you would like to bring in, please, uh, please do so. Uh, otherwise, like promise, I kept you extra four minutes. I apologize for that, but I'm usually on the ball and I know you all <laughs> are eager to go home or your home or you want to see your families, your job after this job. <laughs> Like we say, uh, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to see you in the next après cours. And please, if you have any other ideas you would like to bring to discuss, hopefully next time we'll tackle probably the DBE also. So we'll have a, a feel for both sides. But if it's something you would like to talk about like Moodles and maybe have even somebody invite John to talk about math health services. Even if you wanna have like something more about like, let's say evaluation, maybe we'll talk to Tina to talk to us about more what we should look at and stuff. So we could bring in also specials uh, like um, expert and, uh, and speakers uh, that, that we could bring in and, and, and teach us all uh, new stuff. Okay, but thank you again. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, uh, France. Thanks, uh, Clementina and everybody. Thank you, bien sûr, Richard. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Have a very, very good evening. Bye.